This is a video detailing the management of a contained anastomotic leak following a robotic Ira Lewis esophagectomy using endoluminal vacuum therapy. The patient is a 63-year-old male, otherwise healthy, never smoker, who complained of epigastric pain for two to three months and underwent outpatient EGD and EUS, showing a small ulceration in the cardia adjacent to the GE junction. Pathology from biopsy showed a T2N0 moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma and PET-CT confirmed early stage disease. The patient elected to undergo a completely robotic Ivor Lewis esophagectomy, which had an uneventful intraoperative course. Of note, the intrathoracic anastomosis was created using an EEA orval transoral stapler, as is typical for our institution. His postoperative course was uneventful, and he underwent a fluoroscopic esophagram on postoperative day 7, which showed no evidence of leak. He was discharged home on postoperative day 9 on a soft pureed diet. On postoperative day 11, the patient returned to the emergency room complaining of malaise, right chest and flank pain, and serosanguineous drainage from his right chest incisions. In the ER, he was tachycardic, febrile, and his lab showed leukocytosis. He underwent a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis that showed a large loculated right pleural effusion, and the addition of PO contrast suggested a contained leak in the posterior mediastinum. Here is the abdominal portion of the CT scan showing a contained leak in the posterior mediastinum. The patient was admitted to the operating room where he underwent a right VATS with evacuation of around 1,500 cc's of retained hemothorax. Of note, there was no purulence or evidence of free perforation from the anastomosis. He then underwent an EGD showing an anastomotic dehiscence at the 9 o'clock position, which was approximately 15 to 20 percent of the total circumference. This led to a contained cavity approximately 3 by 2 by 2 centimeters in size. Here is the admission EGD showing a healthy gastric conduit distal to the anastomosis with a contained leak cavity. Due to the patient's hemodynamic stability and contained mediastinal anastomotic leak, the decision was made to manage the patient conservatively with endoluminal vacuum therapy and nasal postpyloric feeding. A 4 millimeter soft nasogastric feeding tube was placed endoscopically into the duodenum via the left nair. While there are prefabricated commercial endoluminal vacuum devices available, these devices are also easily constructed from materials already found on hand in most operating rooms. We constructed our device from a black sponge and a 10 French round JP drain. A proline suture loop is placed on the end of the sponge to allow it to be directed via the endoscope into the leak cavity. This device was brought out through the right nair and connected to a negative pressure vacuum device. Serial chest x-rays were used to confirm placement of the sponge between serial endoscopies. Here we can see both the endoluminal device and feeding tube remain in appropriate position. On postoperative day 15, the patient returned to the operating room for bronchoscopy which showed no fistular communication between the esophagus and bronchus. The repeat endoscopy showed a markedly smaller cavity, now 2 by 1 by 1 centimeter. Endoluminal vacuum therapy was continued. Here is the repeat endoscopy showing rapid improvement of the cavity over just four days with endoluminal vacuum therapy. On postoperative day 17, the patient returned to the operating room for endoscopy, which showed an even smaller leak cavity, and therapy was continued. On postoperative day 19, he again went underwent endoscopy, which showed near resolution of the leak cavity, which could no longer accommodate the vacuum device, so therapy was discontinued.
On postoperative day 21, the patient underwent repeat chest CT, which showed resolution of the subcarinal collection and the right pleural effusion. He was discharged home on postoperative day 23 on a full liquid diet. Here is the repeat CT scan performed just 10 days after diagnosis of the anastomotic leak, showing complete resolution of the contained mediastinal collection. On outpatient follow-up on postoperative day 31, the patient was doing well on a soft pureed diet. On postoperative day 38, he underwent elective outpatient EGD, which showed complete resolution of the anastomotic dehiscence, while also showing that the conduit remained healthy and viable. Here's the endoscopy showing the completely healed anastomosis. On postoperative day 45, the patient returned to the office complaining of mild dysphagia and globus sensation. On postoperative day 52, he underwent outpatient EGD showing a well healed but slightly narrowed anastomosis. Endoscopic dilation with 10 mm and 17 mm Savary Gillard dilators was performed under fluoroscopic guidance. Here is the endoscopy showing the mild stenosis at the anastomosis before dilation. The patient initially did well post-dilation. However, on a further outpatient visit on postoperative day 115, he again complained of dysphagia for the preceding two weeks. On postoperative day 120, he underwent outpatient EGD, showing a mild stenosis at the anastomosis. This was dilated with an 18 and 20 millimeter through the scope balloon. The patient is currently doing well and continues to tolerate the diet. Here is the endoscopy showing the mild stenosis at the anastomosis post-dilation. This case report illustrates that endoluminal vacuum therapy is a viable treatment strategy for contained anastomotic leaks after esophagectomy in selected patients. There are multiple benefits to this strategy, most notably the avoidance of placing a surgical feeding tube. Also, vacuum therapy may promote faster healing through rapid formation of granulation tissue. However, there remain some drawbacks to endoluminal vacuum therapy as well. Placing devices in bilateral anaires may be uncomfortable for stable alert patients who do not remain intubated after the procedure. Initially, this method requires endoscopic expertise and experience to place both the feeding tube and the endoluminal device simultaneously. Thank you for watching our presentation.